In this example, I'm going to show you a quick way of finding the pH under certain conditions. Well, let's look at strong acids. Whenever we have strong acids in solution, that means strong acids will completely dissociate within that solution. For example, let's look at hydrochloric acid. Now, suppose hydrochloric acid associates into H plus and Cl minus. Well, hydrochloric acid has a very, very high Ka. In fact, it's so high, we don't know what it is. Now, this guy will completely dissociate. None of this HCl would be left over at the end of our reaction when equilibrium is reached. And that means if we look at our Ka expression, which, which is the ratio of products over reactants or the concentration of products over reactants, what we see is that if this concentration goes to zero, then this uh, denominator goes to zero and our K becomes infinitely large. So that's why we don't know our Ka value because the fact that we can't divide by zero. So, how do we find the pH of strong acids? Well, notice that at the end of our reaction, none of the HCl will be left over. So that means this 0.01 molar amount of HCl is completely converted to H plus and Cl minus. And exactly 0.01 molar of H plus is left over. So how do I find the pH? Well, pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of this guy. So I simply take the formula, plug in my 0.01 molar into my formula, and I get my pH. So the pH in this case is 2. If this was 0.1 molar, I plug in 0.1 molar. If this was 0.0001 molar, I plug that in as well. I use the strong acid molar concentration to find my pH. Now let's look at strong bases. Strong bases are very similar to this guy. So strong bases completely dissociate in our reaction. That's because our Kb value is very large. In the same way that we looked at Ka value and we saw that that tends to infinity when the bottom goes to zero, the same way that Kb tends to infinity when the bottom goes to zero. So if we begin with 0.1 molar of sodium hydroxide, that guy will completely dissociate into our sodium ion and hydroxide ion. And that means essentially no or zero concentration of this guy is left over at the end. And that means all our 0.01 molar of sodium hydroxide is converted to sodium uh, plus hydroxide. So how do we find the pH? Well, we must first find the pOH. To find the pOH, we simply use the formula negative log of the uh, concentration of hydroxide, which in this case is 0.01 molar. Plug that in and we get 2. But wait, this is the pOH, so we have to convert this to pH. And how do we convert it? Well, we use this formula. If you don't know where this formula comes from, check out the link below. So we plug that in into our formula and we get pH plus 2 equals 14. We subtract 2 from 14 and we get a pH of 12. So, the above, when we deal with strong acids, our pH is low. Whenever we deal with strong bases, our pH is high. Now, if you get to this step and you get 2 and you forget to go to this step, well, a good way of remembering is that if you're dealing with strong bases, our acidity should be high. We should have a basic, I mean, our pH should be high. We should have a basic pH. But a 2 is clearly an acidic pH, so something is wrong. What's wrong is that we have to convert pOH to pH in this way here. So now, let's see how we find the pH when we talk about weak acids and weak bases. Well, things get a little bit more complicated with these guys, because weak acids and weak bases don't dissociate completely. They're incomplete. So let's begin with 0.02 molar of our acetic acid, a weak acid. We see that this guy dissociates incompletely into acetate ion and H plus ion. Well, this is because our Ka is very small. And that means our ratio of our products to our reactants is very small. And what that means is our reaction will lie to the left. Our equilibrium will lie to the left. The reactants will be favored over the products. That means that equilibrium concentration 
of our reactants will be much higher than our products. So, let's set up a table. In our table, we have the initial, initial concentration and the equilibrium concentration. We also have this guy here, the ion, and the hydronium ion. Now only this guy, these guys matter because they are, they are found in the equilibrium expression. So, our initial concentration is 0 0.02 molar of this guy. That's given. Okay. Well, what's our concentration in the initial condition of our acetate ion? Well, it's zero. Initially, none of this dissociated. What about H3O plus? Well, initially, in water, it's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. This is due to the autoionization of water. If you're confused about that, check out the link below. But this number is so small that we can approximate this to be zero. So at, z at uh, initial conditions, our concentration of hydronium is approximately zero. That's the first approximation we must make. Next, suppose our reaction occurred and equilibrium was established. Well, what's the concentration of this guy? Well, we don't know. That's what we want to find, right? So let's let it be x. Now remember, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, one-to-one. -one. And that means this guy will have the same concentration as this guy at equilibrium. So let's give it a 2x. Now what about our reactants? How much reactants are left over after some of this dissociated? Well, if this much dissociated, then 0.02 minus x must be left over. Right? Because this guy plus this guy should give you 0.02, the initial concentration. And that's exactly it. X plus 0.02 minus X gives you this guy. So, now let's write our expression, equilibrium expression for Ka. So suppose we're given some Ka, so we know the Ka. What we need to find is the concentration of this guy. Using that concentration of this guy, we can find the pH. So, this is x and this is x. So we, we write these guys as simply x times x, and the bottom is 0 0.02 minus x. So now we can solve it two ways. The long way and the tedious way is using quadratic formulas. And I'll show you that in a second. The second way is to approximate. So let's compare these two methods and see which one is better. 